Hi, this is Tom Ivers. This uh, video is designed to show you how the FLIR E-Series cameras are used with performance horses in detecting uh, lamenesses and hopefully in preventing lamenesses. Uh, there are going to be a series of uh, different scan sessions that I hope you enjoy. I'll try to describe them as we go. Now, uh, let's bring you about two steps closer, if you will. Okay, now uh, the first thing to know is that this is a, uh, a FLIR E2 camera uh, which shows the temperatures on the side of the screen, That uh, the temperature window. We're looking right now at between 81 and 91 degrees. I'm moving the window already. You can see what happens to the picture as I move the window. Um, and you'll see that several times throughout this uh, tape. Uh, moving the window up and down changes what's in the picture, but does not change the hot and cold spot on the leg. You can just see the hot and cold spots uh, better. Now the Fleury 2 also has uh, the ability to save pictures. Um, they, it makes little JPGs, which are not real high quality. You can uh, use a digital uh, still camera or video camera direct from an E1 that doesn't have the storage capacity that the E2 does and uh, get better pictures actually. So the E1 is $12,000. The E2 can go as high as $27,000. Okay, so now we're, we're kind of wandering around a horse looking for uh, trouble and we're finding some. Uh, each time we find a little something, uh, we save a picture. Uh, generally, when I'm doing scans, I'll uh, take those pictures and uh, print them out for the client so that they can show them to the veterinarian. Uh, here you're looking at a bowed tendon, uh, and a tendon that has been bowed before. And if you look closely, uh, you can see down low on that tendon it's been fired. You can see the little uh, pinhole marks uh, on the tendon. The left leg of this horse is also showing heat at the tendon. There's a little funny spot on the cannon bone of that tendon on the right on the right leg. The horse is facing us. Now we're behind the horse and we're looking at the back of the tendons. And again, uh, the hot spots are very very evident. There's also a little activity down now. Now you see I'm changing the window there, and you can see how it highlights. Now I've got the the thing from uh, open so far, the window open so far that uh, uh, you couldn't see the uh, the differences that we're looking for. Now it's closed back up. It's about 82 to 94. It's about a 12 degree spread, and that's generally the spread that you're looking for. Uh, with the E1 that doesn't have the temperature uh, scale on the side, it still has the uh, colored window, and it, it tells you which way you're going just like those little markers came out just then. Um, I don't think you need the temperature. I think you can get uh, confused by it. Notice that I've closed the window very closely here, 86 to 78, and I'm uh, everything's hotter than the, that scale. Now I'm bringing it back down. I'm up to 96 uh, to 88, and now I can see what I want to see. And we're looking at the main body of the horse. Now we're looking, I think we're looking at the jugular vein there. Might be the belly. Now it's the belly. The camera will focus. And you can get pretty close or you can be pretty far away from the horse. In general, we're standing about four or five feet away from the horse when we're doing these scans. But you can see uh, deer out in the woods from 300 yards away with this camera, so it's it has some reach.
basically what it's doing is seeing heat uh, temperatures like we see visual light it sees infrared light and infrared light uh, corresponds at this uh, wavelength with uh, temperatures that the lens is uh, taking in. Now somebody is waddling up to the horse and we've got a new camera. Look over at the right. You see that FSI? That's FLIR Systems Incorporated <coughs> and this is um, a FLIR Prism camera. That's the $45,000 camera. Um, just about the same pictures. Uh, the Fleur Prism had some extra goodies with it, but uh, the, the thing weighed 35 pounds. You had to wear a big battery pack. The battery packs would run out real quick. The little Fleur, you'll see it in just a minute, the E-Series is about the size of a big flashlight and much, much more easy to use with uh, little uh, video camera type batteries that last a long time. Those are good looking feet on this horse. We want that coronary band to be nice straight line right across the feet and should be about the hottest part on the lower leg except that you can see those tendons are uh, actually hotter. Now I'm moving the window up and down on the floor. And as I do so, uh, things become more or less apparent uh, now we've got a good cross-section of the uh, coronary bands there. We've got a higher heat toward the right in the coronary band and it bleeds down a, a little bit. We don't want it bleeding all the way down to the toes. Okay, now as we look at this new horse, uh, we're starting out with the same uh, shot, which is semi-frontal, about 45 degrees, and that's because uh, we've got a lot of equipment set up to test these two cameras against each other, and uh, normally the front shot would be straight on to the front. But I'm coming in at a 45 degree angle because the other camera's over there straight in front of the horse. In this horse, we see a little bit of hock, low hock. That hot spot in the hock down low shouldn't be there. Uh, we're seeing pretty normal tendons. Now, this is the way a normal tendon will look to you. There is a channel between the uh, uh, tendons and the cannon bone that uh, carries some blood vessels down through it, uh, but uh, that normally is a little bit warmer than the rest of the leg. And as we can see here, you can see actually see the uh, suspensories and the uh, the tendons visibly. So that's a pretty good pair of tendons. There's a little bit of a uh, hot spot over on the left uh, tendon. It's a little bit more than I would like to see, but not bad really. There's that low joint in the hock. I've moved my uh, temperature window up so that everything looks cooler, but it just makes the, the hot spot stand out. And right there at the top of your picture is a little bit of a hot spot on that hock. Good looking coronary bands. There's the hot spot. Just went by. Now we're going to look hard at that. Well, we're not going to look. Well, yeah. <laughs> You can see how confusing a video of this uh, can be to um, 
to an owner of a horse, you don't want to do videos. What you want, what you really want to do is uh, shoot uh, still pictures of the interesting places that you encounter. Because there's a lot of this kind of thing. You're walking around. You're trying to uh, look at the things you want to look at. Now we're uh, looking at a foot. They're cleaning out the uh, hoof right now. And as they clean it, we can start to, well, we changed our window too low. Now we're going to move it back up as soon as we can find that foot. There it is. Okay, now we move the window back up. And we can start to see what's going on inside, underneath that foot. And that's a, a pretty normal foot. There's a little bit uh, too much heat uh, in the sole just to the right of the uh, uh, clefts in the foot. Uh, but that's a pretty good, pretty good looking foot. You'll see some feet later on where you can really tell what what is going wrong. All right, now we're dancing around the horse, and we've just changed cameras. Now we're at the Fleur, um, the $45,000 Fleur, called the Prism. We have both of these cameras at uh, Windy Ridge Farm in Washuga, Washington. Uh, the farm uses uh, their uh, $45,000 camera every week, sometimes every day, with, with a group of horses. And now we've moved that camera somewhat. Uh, it's hard. It's on a big tripod as we were filming this, so it's a little bit more difficult to move around. We wanted to uh, compare the uh, resolution of the two cameras. And you can see that they're they're quite close. Anything you can see on the uh, uh, Fleur Prism, you can see on the uh, E-System camera, which is one third, the, less than one third the price. Clean knees. That's the way you want your knees to look. Relatively clean ankles. There's a little bit of a hot spot in that left fore. The foot is a little bit warmer than the other foot, the left forefoot, and that's the foot we just uh, looked underneath uh, and saw a little bit of heat on the uh, inside of the uh, clefts. There's a jugular vein going down. Now that jugular vein, you can tell when it's been injected. I, we saw a horse a month ago that uh, had had an injection two weeks prior to the scan, and we saw that injection spot. Okay, so we'll do the same horse uh, he's got more problems first of all he's uh, the heat is bleeding down into his feet much more than the other horses that we looked at that's not a real good sign the knees have got heat in them uh, right down there at that third carpal bone on the inside of that knee not very pleasant thing to have going on in a horse uh, worth, uh, if we had a lame horse, it would be worth diagnosing with a uh, uh, X-ray at the at the knee. Uh, we see a pretty uh, severe 
Not severe, but certainly a bump on that left front tendon over there. Bump of heat. We're not seeing a bump on the leg when we actually look at the horse, but we're seeing a bump of heat about halfway down that tendon. Bad sign. It's time to pull out the ultrasound machine. Both hocks have uh, low, low joint heat in them. Uh, low joint heat in the hocks is relatively common in performance horses. Uh, but if you uh, start getting hock pain and the horse starts to stab a little bit, then uh, it's time to take care of it. Uh, the hock is the one joint that you can inject with corticosteroids without uh, doing much in the way of damage. Again, we're adjusting the camera. It took me a while to learn how which buttons to push to uh, get this camera zeroed in, but you know, after a day, I pretty well had it down. Looking for hot spots is a stifle along the back. Stifle on this horse is clean, cold as a cucumber. Over the top of the back. A little bit of uh, heat back toward the uh, tail of the horse. Well, right there in the middle of the back, there's a a uh, splotch of heat that we don't want necessarily want to see. Yep. Is there, can you go around the front and face, kind of face me so I can... Yeah, maybe you and Sandy switch. Good. Thank you. Of course, pretty sure he's in the back. I know this. Oh, There's a wild eye on you. Okay, Tom? Yeah. Uh, wave that when you get down towards his back and you leave that monitor go right there. Thank you. Boy, this is great. Hold still, right there. A lot of color on that monitor. This makes the job so very much easier. I think it's because that little the monitor. I mean, you got that LCD yeah. there that you can hold it wherever you want to hold it and look at it instead of your eye being attached to it. I'm going to take one and get a couple of feet or something. I'm going to be taking a shot down at the monitor. You don't chew on it. I'll get this. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Now, this isn't ABC Sports, so I'm not going to be jumping into every uh, silent hole here and and giving you uh, information you don't necessarily need. Uh, but it's interesting that uh, as we were using this FLIR camera on these horses, one of the things we discovered is that at high speeds, the treadmill really can tend to heat up the, the feet. And not only that, but you can see uh, with the thermal camera, camera how the um, feet are uh, contacting the, uh, the treadmill itself, the treadmill belt. And you can also see the muscles warming up as the horse goes. You can see muscles that are working and see muscles that aren't working in, uh, in muscle-injured horses. Right now you're looking through the FLIR prism camera instead of the E1, but shortly you'll be looking through the E1. The prism, ha there's the E1 right there. Now, um, they were on different heat settings, uh, uh, heat ranges so that their colors are different, but you can see that the um, the clarity of picture and the um, ability to spot hot spots is uh, just as good on uh, this E1 camera. And you can watch me move the windows around. I'm going to try to be as quiet as I can and let you uh, enjoy these uh, <laughs> enjoy the silence of some of these videos as we go through them.
work and are eaten up. The red button. Yeah, it's same record. Yeah. Now we'll go around on the other side. 
Now here, this is from a boot. Uh, it's not from, um, it's not a, an organ there. It's not very, that's a boot rub. And back here, yeah, right. So you can see he got, <laughs> he got really hurt this morning. <laughs> That's, that's Yeah, and that's really sore right now. Yeah. And see, that's what I'm saying about an inflammatory process. If it's there, this machine sees it, and this one's, this machine says that area is screaming right now. So he's very sore there right now. And if you reach up the suspensory and just at the sesamoids, and then you've got some XYZ down here. So XYZ sesamoid area, suspensory area, and then something up. Now, he says it's been here for a long time, but still there's inflammation there and repair going on. So, uh, What we're seeing with the infrared machine is heat back at the heel in this, in this foot. And it's because the foot is too, it has too low an angle. Can you see that? Now I'm going to raise the temperature up a little bit and see if we can isolate this. But on the other horse we looked at, we had a coronary band that was a straight line all the way around. In this case, we've got a coronary band that's bleeding down at the heel. The heat is going down into the heel. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you, if you look back at the foot and take a real good look at that foot, you'll see that the shoe is put on outside of the heel and to the rearward of the heel. And that's the correct solution to this problem. The shoer is trying to get foot back, get more heel back uh, on this horse than he has currently. And so basically you put the shoe where you want the foot to go, and slowly but surely the foot comes to the shoe. The foot that we saw on the other one. Yeah, it's completely yellow. Yeah, and uh, extremely hot. Now I'm going to get rid of some of that yellow, but see where the yellow stays is particularly at this heel right here, okay? That's the real bad spot, but you can see that he's got heat inside the soles on, on, on both heels and coming up to about here. This is real typical, and what your guy should be doing is taking this shoe out like this, uh, that, that, even I more than he is. I find this one, is that too much hmm? Well, uh, if, if he puts this out, now he's doing the right thing here. See, he's got extra shoe here. That's good, things here. but he's coming in too tight, uh, yeah, so it's more open. Yeah, more open and more straight, you know, and that'll solve some of this contraction that you're getting right there. Uh, I'm seeing something a little bit funny on that uh, right tendon, but uh, I'm not sure, and I'm seeing a little knock down here on the uh, le uh, left ankle. The feet are normal. The knees appear to be normal. I'm going to walk in front of the horse. Let's feet. Uh, we've got, you can see the uh, little clip there coming up, and that's the funny place on the foot. Uh, going up the legs, and we've got a little bit of knee on the inside here. Um, from the front, we're not seeing too much, although we're going to see, but we're going to see something back there. See that? Turn the temperature down just a little bit. See that patch back there? Something's going on there. But otherwise, we're real, real, real clean on this guy now from the front. Now let's go around. Um, let me move my temperature down and isolate this. So he was bandaged, sir. Huh? He had bandages on him. Huh? Yeah, but uh, the bandage artifact is, uh, we're not looking at artifact here, it would be the whole leg that was uh, lit up. We've got something going on there. Come back. Okay, now we're not seeing so much on this side, back at the back of the leg, but we're seeing this same heat uh, on the inside of both front legs. That's too much, okay? And there's a little bit of a bump right in the middle of that uh, tendon on the far side. But we had the same bump on Now that's the right side. And again, we've got two little bumps of heat on that tendon that we don't see on the outside. And we don't see much on the outside of this tendon where just a minute ago we were looking at the inside of it and we're seeing something right about the same place that this uh, piece of heat is here. But normally I would consider that a normal 
uh, area. This over here I don't consider normal and that's the way this leg looked from the other side. So on both legs we've got some that appear to be good hocks. I'm looking for that spot that I saw on the lower leg. I don't see it now. See, when we're in a place where the breeze is blowing through, sometimes uh, some of these places cool off before you get to them. That place right there was unusual before. Let's look at this tree. Helping down the back muscles, on muscles. And a little bit more hock on the, this side. Uh, eh, pretty good. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. A little bit of activity right where that scar is, but the scar itself could be giving us as much heat as anything else. So I wouldn't call that. And there are a couple little bumps, like, see that little bump right there? I'll point to it with a pen. See that little bump right there? Okay. That we don't want to see. And it could be that start looking like the other guy's foot after a while. Right now, it looks okay. You'll get away with it. But soon enough, that toe is going to start going like this, and the whole foot's going to start going like that. The other, the other foot as well, no? Yeah, the other foot is already stuck out there. Okay. And <clears throat> this will cause tendon and suspensory problems. Uh, so and now notice how uh, this foot on the inside is already outside the shoe. Uh, it, uh, you should never get to that point. You should have the shoe outside the foot always at the heel. In other words, the heel should always be growing toward the shoe. And so right now, that foot is over the shoe. And it's a real sore spot at the inside heel of this horse's foot. Um, and some, some distortion in the, in the sole. But the big problem is right here at this heel. It's, that's very, very sore and inflamed. Now, if you take a look at the, with the camera, take a look at the actual shoe. <clears throat> you can see that the horse has got a bar shoe on, but uh, he's got the shoe elevated from the original shoe, giving the horse an extra two degrees of angle, uh, which is cute for when the horse has to go back to work, but not for right now when we're still trying to solve the healing problem. Take this bar off, straighten the east ends of the shoe like this and encourage the heel to grow rearward for the time being and then once you have your heel back and you still might have a little bit of sore foot then put the bar back on but not not to get angle but rather straight across not to get angle the angle pulls the foot into thinking it's the problem's over and the problem's not over did it go in the here look see this See that hot spot right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. It's screaming. You know, that hurts. Can you see if he has a Oh, uh, yeah, there you go, there you go. Okay. Uh, up through here, it's hot. And on the side of the fetlock, right here, was well, that shaved or not? No. No? Okay, right there is a hot spot. Now, we might see something like that on the inside, too. Truly, this is all screaming. All of this is hot. It's almost like if you make we make videos as well, and so we just kind of. Yeah. But it's not hot. It's not hot. Cool. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not hot. It means the edema over the top of the yeah. Well, it's, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hey, there you go. What are you doing with my horse? <laughs> it's your horse? Yeah. <laughs> hey. We're checking this splint out. Oh, cool. Because he's never, he's never been lame a day. Yeah. 
and it's been almost a year. Well, there's certainly no inflammation there that's reaching the surface, that's for sure. And at the tendons here, that thermography? Yeah. Bump. Mm -hmm. so Ooh, maybe, I should know, bring my horse over here. He's old. Now that's not a lane I know. Uh, so uh, 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 this machine keeps collecting the form of the This is made by four. Oh, it is four. See that uh, left foot? See how uh, we got what we should see in a line all the way around the corner, of the line. and what we've got is a bleed down okay. at the back at the heels. So this horse has got a sore heel on that uh, left hand. Oh, it's that word with his failure then, shouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a really expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> so left hand, both left sides are a little bit <coughs> So, you know, my guess is that maybe you have some saddle pony. contact all the way back. Yeah. Are you using one of those then, pads uh, that goes like that? Or you you got that? Uh, or is it an very thin, um, Cynthia Pedicola's golden girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's, got, it's got air. Yeah, exactly. Free roam at the yeah. place. If I had so you if I was seeing yard, stuff like this right on thoroughbred, but I take off the head and it's got on, and I put a pad on it, it gets on this, on this side and this side, but through here, there's no pad at all. I see. You know? Yeah. So that the okay, it's going to be. No and, and you know, I'm still juggling what I think is the best saddle for me, too, yeah, which right. I haven't. Right. Yeah, well, something's oh, going on. Life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, nothing real serious. That's Clint. So that's oh, right in the check living in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it could be deep flexor too. Well, this side looks good for me. Yeah. 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 Let, me, let me play with my camera. Well, he's just had ice on his legs. So Oh, did he have ice on the wall? No, it's 5.30, we stopped 6. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, we're, we're see. now, I'm not zeroing in yet on what we're looking at, actually. Mm -hmm. 
but this is screaming. Okay. The right front is screaming? The right front. Oh, that's interesting, because I would have thought it would be the left front. Well, now, how much work has he done today? Uh, we went out on a, on a, we dumped some spleen today. Okay. Uh, we'll want to look at him again in the morning, because okay. after work, the leg that is used is hot, okay. and the leg that wasn't used is cold. But, you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to sniff this up a little higher. What, what I'd be interested in is the Okay, uh, now, see where that little scar is? Yeah. That's uh, real inflamed all around there. If uh, you want to put your finger on it, or somebody wants to put their finger on it. Way down, way down, way down, way down, way down, way down, right there, and, and forward, right there, and down. Right there is a huge pile of heat. See that? Yeah. Um, in an odd place. <clears throat> like an extensor. I'm going to look at the other side of it in a minute. Okay, let's go up the way a little bit. Just focus. You know, it would help if I put my glasses on. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine what would be there but mm -hmm. an extensor ligament. It'd be my first get. Now look, we're halfway up to tendon now. Mm -hmm. And we, we've got a hot channel there, but that hot channel could be servicing this thing down mm -hmm. here, so we don't really call the hot channel. But then see the bulge? See the bulge here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the other side and see if we see the same. Okay. Down at the ankle again. It's wrapping clear around. Mm -hmm. That's a capacitor. Mm -hmm. We've still got not as much as a bulge of heat, but we've still got the bulge. There's a stripe there. Mm -hmm. stripe. See, it's mm -hmm. a little bit colder. Usually the outside of the leg is always colder than the inside. Mm -hmm. Now let's just look at the other leg. Yeah, this would, this would be the leg I'd be worried about. Do on that chair? See, that doesn't look too bad to me. Good. In both. Yeah. A little bit in both sides. Uh, otherwise, pretty cold hawks. The other thing we would be very interested in is the back skin. Yeah. L3. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, uh, as you go up the leg, mm -hmm. it's going to get hotter anyway, okay, so when you look at the hops, you look at, uh, you got to turn it back down okay. so you can see something, and all we saw was a slight low joint. Feet are good, both sides, let's just look at the heels. This is wonderful, might be worth actually buying it, huh? Okay. There's the back one, let me just uh, raise this a little bit. Focus better. Okay. Okay. Raise it some more. Okay. Now. The hot spot working back. Right here. Yes, that would be it. There. A little one right there. Another significant one there. Another one there. A serious one here. Little one there. And kind of a significant one through here. Uh, most of which I would blame on saddle. Okay. We couldn't believe that grass hay could be that high, and I sent two well, samples. Well, grass, grass. We made grass. Yeah, okay, but so, but it's made into hay. It's not, it's not out on pasture. Oh, no, it's just grass. Any grass can cause things. No, um, this was, this is just grass hay. Yeah. But we sent two samples to New Mexico State University, and they both tested in the low 20s. Did you guys bring a hook pick with you by any chance? I can go. Okay, now, uh, John, hold this horse. Mm -hmm. this
But, uh, okay. okay, John, you can take a picture of this as we're looking at it. Okay. Oh, so then you just video the exam. Yeah. Huh? Well, we just, we do that for our own, own purposes. But the place we're looking at is right here. These, you know, these heels are both hot. It's right at this plate, at this um, right, right. crown there, yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. Okay, and that, that heat pattern is bulging out. Yeah, that's what you're right, saying. Right. And, and then we've got heat in both heels. They're, they're both hot. Okay. But right where yeah. your thumb is, that's, that's, that's the hot. unusual place. Okay. God, what a deal. And, and, you know, and I know that's the spot. You know, I just absolutely know it. Uh, but this was so nothing. Mm -hmm. He's getting a little bit from it. I usually couldn't get anything from it. You know what he's got? I bet you that wall's just separated. Yeah. I bet you anything. I'll just go in there and debride that wall. But you're darn. Wow. So so pink is 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 a temperature range, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and we and also like have we have two bulges. We have right there, right there, okay. and we have right here two bulges of heat. Okay, let's take a look.